Hello everybody, I'm Paul Beckwith, and in this video I'm going to talk about a new peer-reviewed paper that just came out that estimates the future heat-related and cold-related mortalities or death rates per 100,000 people in the population under climate change, demographic, and adaptation scenarios in 854 European uh, cities. So this paper just came out in Nature Medicine on January 27, 2025. And uh, I was looking on Twitter slash X for climate stuff. And there's just hardly, there's less and less all the time. Sometimes some, some stuff comes across. So, you know, I'll keep an account there, but I think I'll probably be using it less and less like uh, many other people. So I have a Blue Sky account. And uh, if you are using Blue Sky, I'll show you what my handle is, or you can just search for me. So let's have a look at some of the um, hashtags and groups in Blue Sky to start off, which is where I found uh, this, this paper. So I'll give you kind of, a, kind of a background here. Let me just adjust the camera. I'm a little bit off. Okay, so this is a paper in Nature Medicine. So let's go to the beginning here. Um, and, uh, well, first I'll show you a couple things um, that I came across, um, not related. Floating solar has a massive potential in the U.S. There's a new paper on floating solar, so solar panels that are sitting in water. A couple advantages are uh, they can stay cooler, so they're more efficient, and they can block... Uh, the water so they can reduce the evaporation from the water. So there's that uh, article. Um, and there's this is solar energy, a peer reviewed paper about this potential. I may um, do a video on this. It's very interesting. Um, anyway, we'll see. Uh, some news on um, the UN climate change body. Okay, so the U.S. once again exited the Paris Agreement. It takes a year to come into effect. But billionaire Michael Bloomberg is funding the U.N. climate change body to make up for the deficit. So that's quite big news for the, for the U.N. and for COPs. So this is Blue Sky. This is my Blue Sky account. Um, so my Blue Sky account is just, um, it's just at, Paul H. Beckwith dot B-S-K-Y dot social. Okay, so it's at P-A-U-L, Paul, H for Henry, middle name, and Beckwith, B-E-C-K-W-I-T-H, and the handles in Blue Sky are always dot B-S-K-Y dot social. So you can just search for me and find me and... Uh, you add if you add me, I'll just I'll try to endeavor to add you back. Um, you know I'll I'll check. I mean sometimes it might be a backlog, but I will check and and uh, reciprocate. So I'm in a couple different. I search for a couple different things. So I've got climate science here, and uh, there's a whole bunch of good ones. Uh, I've got climate crisis here, and uh, also. Uh, this one here I'll probably use more often than any others. It's climate papers. And this is the uh, article I came across. Extreme heat will kill millions of people in Europe without rapid action. So I clicked on this link and it brought me to this article here. Now, what do they say? Well, the climate models predict that the number of heat-related deaths could soar in cities in Europe over the coming century even when efforts are made to adapt and keep people safe. So this shows you, um, this was just a heat wave in Barcelona, Spain, and paramedics and stretchers, ambulance. So the paper's showing that an extra 2.3 million people in European cities could die as a result of extreme temperatures by the end of the century. So I think this is a very conservative estimate. I would say it would be much, much higher you know, given climate tipping points and so on. This is based on probably just, you know, warming from, well, it's warming from different um, scenarios, IP, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, scenarios. Um, and uh, so they looked at 854 urban areas, 30 European countries, um, to look at temperature-related deaths between um, this 2015 and 2019. 
99. So they went back um, 10 years and started there. And they also looked at strategies to keep people safe amid the rising heat, like increasing the amount of green space in cities, that keeps it cooler. Uh, also provide shade in cities and installing air conditioning in homes or heat pumps, which can both heat and cool. Um, so those sort of things, uh, you know, hydration is important. So it's in Nature Medicine, um, this article, and basically um, Mediterranean regions like Eastern Spain, Southern France, Italy, and Malta are on track to be the worst affected. So, so this is with a 1.5 C warming, which we already have, and this is with a 4 degrees C warming, and this is population in millions, is indicated by the diameter the size of the circles, okay, and uh, the change in temperature related excess death rates, this is deaths per 100,000 person years, so climbing, um, you know, up to as much as 195 people dying per 100,000 person years, um, okay, so excess mortalities, and, uh, you know, this is, now, now, I tried to access it here, and it's blocked, Okay, it's a lot of nature papers are are behind a paywall. So I thought, okay, well, I can't look at it. So I went back to Blue Sky and I scrolled down and I saw a uh, very similar title just right here, estimating future heat related and cold related mortality. Ah, 854 European cities. It's the same article. Clicked on this link and uh, I actually, lo and behold, I got to... Um, this paper. So it got through the paywall. So if it doesn't work with the first link, go keep looking. Maybe you'll find a link where it does work. So I've got this peer reviewed paper published uh, 27th of January online. And, you know, there we go. Okay. So, so basically, previous health impact assessments of temperature related mortality in Europe indicated that the mortality burden attributable to cold is much larger than for heat. In fact, you know, as much as 10 times higher, but that's going to reverse as we get more and more warming. So they, they looked at, like I said, 854 European urban areas. And they showed that with no adaptation to heat, the increase in heat related deaths consistently exceeds any decrease in cold-related deaths across all considered scenarios. They found that under the lowest mitigation and adaptation scenario, uh, which is, you know, these, these scenarios, SSP 3-7.0, in this case was a bad one, they estimate a net death burden due to climate change increasing by about 50% and accumulating 2,345,000 deaths. 95% confidence interval, um, anywhere from 330 to almost 5 million, okay, between 2015 and 2099. So they started, you know, like I said, 10 years back. And uh, even with mitigation and uh, adaptation, that would reduce those numbers, but they'd still be high. So I'm, I'm just going to go to the figures. So this shows you the uh, projections. This is under different IPCC scenarios of warming. And with this one here, um, they're showing, uh, so the cold, a decrease in the number of people dying from cold, an increase in, large increase in the people dying from heat. And if you get heat minus cold, you get, this is a net increase, right? When you get warming, you're going to get less people dying from cold, more people dying from heat. The, the net effect is, is a positive. It's a black line here. And uh, they divided up into different countries in two different periods, 2050, 50, so 25 years out, and then uh, end of the century sort of time frames. They look at the changes in each country. And uh, this is another way they look at it. This is excess death rate by times 100, 000, per 100,000. Um, so you can see these numbers, you know, how these numbers, so Malta is the highest here. Malta is still in the lead, lots of uh, Southern European countries um, going up higher. Malta is still winning. You don't want to win. Malta is still winning, or should I say losing? This is in Southern Europe. So these countries all, you know, much higher. And this is the, um, the uh, 
cold related uh, mortalities. So the, the heating ones really start to, to dominate in many Southern European cities. Okay, and then the maps, I showed you the 1.5 and the 4 before, so they also, this is data from 1.5, we've already passed this, 2 degrees Celsius, 3, and then um, 4 degrees Celsius. So you can see the, um, you can see what's going on here, this is where you get the highest rates of, of mortality, not surprisingly, because it's the southernmost it's near the Mediterranean, which when the water gets very warm, you get very high humidity and wet bulb temperature. It takes out a lot of people. Um, and this shows, uh, um, this is some more data um, under uh, different adaptation scenarios. So if you do 0% adaptation, you get this type of curve. If you uh, do 10% of what you could do, you get this. 50% here, and if you go to 90% full adaptation, heat pumps are with AC in every home and many parks and trees, you can actually um, keep the excess death rate much, much lower than it, than it is even, even now with high warming. It, it all depends on how um, seriously we do the adaptation. So that's, that's kind of good news there. So uh, if you're not in Blue Sky, uh, thank you to all the people over time that have been saying back with Get on Blue Sky. And I say, I am on Blue Sky. But then when I show the videos for my, for my movies, my, my YouTubes, I'm always referring to, to Twitter, to X. So, you know, I'll be doing that less and less. And I'll be showing you Blue Sky stuff more and more from now on. Although, you know, I need to see what's going on in X. So... I, I would discard it, get rid of it, but I, I'll keep it because, um, you know, I mean, I need another source of information just to check. And I don't want to just get information from people that agree with me. I want to get information from people that disagree with me as well to try to keep a more, you know, balanced focus on, on what's happening. So anyway, so yeah, very, very interesting uh, paper here. Um, that was just published and uh, you can re reproduce what I'm showing you in this video and uh, have a look for yourself. Well, thanks for listening. I have a very, very long day tomorrow. Lots of meetings. I have a talk to give. Lots of stuff going on. Um, and there's a science cafe in my local library in the evening. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be a super busy day. So I'm keeping this video short and uh, try to uh, catch up on sleep tonight. So anyway, thanks for listening. Please consider going to paulbeckwith.net and donating to PayPal to support my research and videos. Thanks again and bye for now.